Once again, the United States has shocked the world with a mind-blowing technology, the X-Wing aircraft. This invention is renowned for its groundbreaking design and unparalleled capabilities, and has redefined aerial combat in ways that few could have imagined. But what is it about this fighter that makes it so exceptional? How did it revolutionize the way air battles are fought and won? Join us as we look at the features that set the X-Wing apart as a true game-changer in modern warfare. The X-Plane, also known as the X-65, is in a position to make truly revolutionary changes in the field of air transportation. This experimental aircraft comes from DARPA's control of revolutionary aircraft with new effectors known as Crane Program. Aurora Flight Sciences, a Boeing-owned company, has started production after successfully completing a crucial step called the Critical Design Review, which approved moving forward with building the aircraft. The main task of the X-65 is to validate an innovative idea known as active flow control. This technology relies on steering the aircraft and improving its performance without moving parts, such as flaps or rudders. Instead, the system applies pressurized air delivered by 14 effectors, each individually adapted to specific locations on the wings and surrounding surfaces. Using this novel configuration, the plane can be more agile and perform well across a wide range of speeds and flight conditions. Perhaps one of the most interesting aspects of the X-65 is its modularity. The wings are replaceable, and the active flow control effectors can be swapped with alternative designs. This versatility transforms the plane into a flying testbed, serving as a platform for continuous research and development into the next generation of aviation technology. Active flow control technology holds enormous promise. By eliminating the need for traditional mechanical parts, planes could become lighter, more efficient, and easier to maintain. These enhancements could be applied to both military and commercial aviation. Aurora Flight Sciences has begun fabrication on the 30-foot wingspan, uncrewed X-65 at its West Virginia and Mississippi plants. Final assembly and system testing will take place at its headquarters in Manassas, Virginia. Kevin Ulick, the Crane Program Director at Aurora Flight Sciences, expressed excitement about entering the manufacturing phase. He emphasized the team's progress toward validating active flow control technology and unlocking new possibilities in the development of future aircraft designs. He also noted that Aurora was honored to contribute to such a transformative program. The X-65 project represents years of effort. Over the past three years, Aurora and Boeing have been working on everything from early design concepts to wind tunnel testing and trials of the active flow control system. The ultimate objective is to conduct flight tests of the 7,000-pound aircraft by the summer of 2025, during which it is expected to reach speeds of up to Mach 0.7, or approximately 535 miles per hour. These tests are anticipated to demonstrate how active flow control can enhance not only flight performance, but also the design and construction of aircraft. The U.S. X-Plane concept aims to redefine amphibious warfare. A groundbreaking airborne boat is currently under development that could dramatically change the way amphibious warfare is carried out. This exciting project, the Liberty Lifter, is being designed under the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. The goal is to create a large, long-range aircraft capable of flying close to the surface of the water, allowing it to perform heavy lifting while staying under the radar. This new class of aircraft is being developed to support island missile launches, and back amphibious military deployments. Flying at low levels above the water's surface generates the ground effect, which lowers air resistance, improves fuel economy, and makes the aircraft harder to detect by radar. The water surface introduces radar clutter, making it extremely difficult for enemy missile systems to locate the aircraft. Upon completion, the Liberty Lifter is predicted to fly at an altitude of 3,000 meters, travel up to 7,400 kilometers, and carry payloads of up to 90 tons at speeds of up to 460 kilometers per hour using the ground effect. Ramp access and egress will be achieved via ramps in the nose or tail of the aircraft. Currently, the Department of Defense has contracted General Atomics and Aurora Flight Sciences to conceptualize this new type of aerial vehicle for DARPA. The design from General Atomics features 12 turboshaft engines and a twin-hull mid-wing structure. In contrast, Aurora Flight Sciences is using a conventional single-hull flying boat configuration with a high wing and eight turboprop engines for propulsion. 
The U.S. government has allocated $55 million for this conceptual phase, with plans to choose one design by 2026. Flight tests are expected to start in late 2027, and the aircraft could be fully operational and in military service by 2028. This is not the first time the U.S. has considered seaplanes for military purposes. During World War II, seaplanes played a significant role, but became less popular after the war as helicopters and long-range fixed-wing aircraft took over many of their roles. Additionally, the U.S. developed a robust network of airstrips on Pacific islands, reducing the need for seaplanes. Nevertheless, recent developments in missile technology introduced by countries such as China and North Korea have prompted the U.S. to review its strategy. To prevent its entire arsenal from being concentrated on a few vulnerable locations, the U.S. has dispersed its assets over numerous small islands. These island outposts equipped with missile launchers form what is called a missile wall, designed to deter potential threats from China. However, ensuring these remote bases are stocked with ammunition and other supplies is difficult because most do not have airstrips, and small helicopters do not have the capacity to transport large amounts of cargo over long distances. This is where the Liberty Lifter could come in. Unlike traditional transport planes or helicopters, a seaplane like the Liberty Lifter can land on water, making it perfect for resupplying islands that lack runways. It offers a unique solution to a long-standing problem, how to maintain constant supplies for isolated military bases while keeping them protected from enemy attacks. The Liberty Lifter can address a significant issue in amphibious operations, particularly in the ship-to-shore phase, where troops and supplies are exposed to enemy fire. If destroyed, it can prevent attackers from seizing a strong position, allowing defending forces to counterattack. By using the Liberty Lifter, the U.S. military may be able to avoid some of these difficulties. In a direct delivery flight, the aircraft could provide heavy equipment and landing capabilities directly to the shore or the battlefield itself, minimizing the time and risk of conventional amphibious landings. This would make it more difficult for defenders to prevent an attack before it's too late. In the meantime, the U.S. military is employing makeshift solutions to address these issues. For example, in 2021, the U.S. Special Operations Command SOC created expendable floats for its MC-130J Commando II transport aircraft. These float capabilities make the aircraft amphibious, allowing them to launch and land on water. As a result, they are used as improvised seaplanes for Special Forces delivery and retrieval. Although these new generation solutions are useful, they are temporary measures compared to the function of a specially designed aircraft like the Liberty Lifter. The U.S. military is using makeshift solutions like expendable floats for its MC-130J Commando II transport aircraft to make them amphibious, allowing them to land on water for Special Forces delivery and retrieval. However, these temporary measures are temporary compared to specially designed aircraft like the Liberty Lifter. Advancements in weapons technology have made traditional amphibious landings more costly and difficult. The idea of OTH amphibious operations isn't new. With respect to June 1991, Jerome Beerley and Thomas Seale, both authors then with the U.S. Marine Corps Association, published an article on the nature in which OTH operations can alter military doctrine for undertaking amphibious assaults. In contrast to conventional amphibious landings, where they are necessary for troops to already secure a beachhead before their advance, OTH operations require troops to arrive quickly on the beach, organize them, and move them deep into enemy territory. This means that it is no longer necessary to establish a defensible beachhead or stockpile vast amounts of equipment on the beach, both of which are major targets if the enemy has success. It puts out of kilter all such operations and accelerates the entire process. The Liberty Lifter, with its ability to deliver heavy cargo and forces quickly while staying off the radar, could play a crucial role in supporting these types of OTH amphibious operations. The U.S. Marine Corps already employs a number of assets for amphibious landings such as hovercraft, amphibious assault vehicles, and helicopters. However, each of these has its limitations. However, the Liberty Lifter may be valuable as a complement to such current tools to provide an alternative means of importing troops and equipment into enemy ground without unnecessary risk to these units. For instance, in a 2020 study on behalf of the U.S. Marine Corps University, Stephen Yaden reviewed the advantages and disadvantages of multiple amphibious assault vehicles. Hovercrafts, though high speed and able to carry large amounts of equipment, are very delicate and lack the firepower and armor to effectively assault even well-fortified beachheads. 
In contrast, amphibious assault vehicles are armed and armored, and thus better suited for opposed landings, but do not have the range or speed for OTH, because these types of vehicles are also susceptible to anti-tank weapons and lack the firepower to make up for the anti-tank element, they are risky to operate. Yaden further pointed out the need for air supremacy in amphibious landings. However, this is not always guaranteed. In some cases, anti-aircraft weapons can limit or prevent the use of aircraft, which is a significant disadvantage when trying to establish dominance on the battlefield. Due to these constraints, the Liberty Lifter can be a solution of great value by adding another dimension to the Marine Corps' amphibious operations. With its ability to carry heavy cargo, travel long distances, and avoid detection by enemy radar, the Liberty Lifter could help make amphibious assaults safer and more effective. It may offer a faster, more secure means of moving and deploying troops and equipment, supplementing the capabilities of hovercrafts, assault vehicles and helicopters, and at least mitigating some of their limitations. In this fashion, the Liberty Lifter may have a critical role to play in modernizing AF and thereby lowering the risks and costs of such operations. A research subsidiary of Boeing, Aurora Flight Sciences, Aerospace and Aeronautics Research, focused on aviation has revealed it is developing a next-generation X-plane with fan and wing technology. This new design aims to enable high-speed mobility in contested environments while functioning independently of runways, making it ideal for operations in locations without prepared landing areas. The X-plane is part of the U.S. government's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA Speed and Runway Independent Technology Sprint Program, which is focused on developing technologies that allow aircraft to achieve both high speeds and the ability to operate without relying on traditional runways. At the beginning of the year, DARPA made a contract award to Aurora and Bell for the Sprint program, an important move towards the realization of more flexible and effective military aircraft. The objective of the Sprint program is to develop, build, and fly an X-plane, which will showcase fundamental technologies and integrated systems required to build an air vehicle simultaneously offering both high-speed and runway unawareness capabilities. Aurora, in partnership with Boeing, is developing and testing these technologies with the goal of supporting mobility needs in the U.S. military, particularly in difficult or hostile environments. Aurora has also released some renderings of the fan and wing technology, for which it is a core technology of the new X-Plane. The fan and wing technology incorporates a three-dimensional lift fan within a combined wing body layout and enables vertical lift functions without compromising the aircraft's load capacity or the aerodynamic performance found in classic fixed-wing aircraft. This suite of characteristics is predicted to make the X-Plane very versatile and powerful for use across a broad range of military applications. Currently, Aurora's sprint program design, only an uncrewed aerial demonstrator with a wingspan of 45 foot long and a payload capacity of 1,000 LBS. This is only the beginning as Aurora plans to expand this technology to larger and medium and heavy lift aircraft for the future. They further predict a manned wing, 130 feet wide, with four fans and a 40-foot bay for paying load. This larger airborne platform has the potential to match or outperform in terms of payload, range, and speed current fixed-wing military transport aircraft while preserving the benefits of vertical takeoff and landing VTOL. This year, Aurora took a big step in demonstrating the feasibility of fan and wing technology. They finished the first of a battery of significant tests during the sprint program. One of the major tests was a ground effect trial, which used a small 4.6 foot wingspan model with three lift fans. The outcome of the present test was that the suck down effect of the lift fans, which may influence the aircraft in hover, is negligible. Also, the landing gear was positioned at the appropriate height in order to prevent any stability problem during ground operation, like gratuitous pitching moment. Looking ahead, Aurora plans to conduct more tests in late 2024 and early 2025, including wind tunnel tests and stability and control assessments using a larger nine-foot full wingspan aircraft model. These tests will help to further refine the aerodynamic design of the aircraft. The company also plans to begin flight tests in 2027 with the current phase of the Sprint program scheduled to continue until May 2025. The preliminary design review is set for April 2025. Mike Kaimona, president and CEO of Aurora, highlighted the potential effects of the Sprint program 
and noted that high-speed, quiet, and runway-free transportation capabilities being designed may have a powerful impact on safety and effectiveness of the military in contested areas. By making it possible for the U.S. military to operate in locations where traditional runways are not available, this technology could ensure that no area is off-limits for military operations. In general, the fan and wing X-plane development is a promising next generation in military aviation, providing humanitarian value in highly dynamic, high-speed, versatile transport in rough and hostile regimes. With the technology continually advancing, it is likely to make a significant difference to the way in which the U.S. military will conduct warfare around the globe. The X-wing is one of the most famous ships in the galaxy due to its unique S-foils and angular, sharp, needle-nose cockpit. It's such a pervasive presence that it has altered the way we think about time itself, or so it seemed after it became adopted as a symbol of hope when the Rebel Alliance attacked the Empire's Death Star. The gallantry and self-sacrifice of the Rebel pilots, not least Luke Skywalker piloting his iconic Red Stripe X-Wing with the name Red 5, was a decisive event that shifted the calendar to zero BBY. Although Luke Skywalker is the most well-known pilot to fly the X-Wing, Many smaller pilots as well, such as Wedge Antilles, Tycho Selchu, Corin Horn, Gavin Darklighter, and Poe Dameron have also led this iconic starship. The X-Wing was the heart and soul of the Rebel Alliance and the Resistance, resisting the tightening grip of the Galactic Empire and eventually the First Order. But what might surprise some people is that the X-Wing, with its famed design and capabilities, wasn't always meant to be the small but powerful fighter we know today. Indeed, it may well have become one of the Empire's most potent weapons, perhaps surpassing even the Great Death Star. Brilliant engineering currently drives the development of miracles in war conditions. And when the Clone Wars broke out between the Galactic Republic and the Separatists in 22 BBY, the Republic found itself in desperate need of a new starfighter. The Republic turned to the Incom Corporation and Sub-Pro Corporation to develop a ship strong enough to stand up to the Separatists' brutal firepower in particular against the Vulture-class droid starfighters. All the Republic needed was an aircraft that was like the Vulture in terms of maneuverability and firepower, but also capable of fulfilling the aircraft's role, both in space and on planets. The outcome was the Z-95 Headhunter, a fighter aircraft that was similar in an early stage of the X-Wing design, but with the familiar absent split wings. The Z-95 had two stationary wings that could cut through both space and atmosphere, along with Incom's 2A fission engines. It didn't come with a hyperdrive out of the box, and many models couldn't make hyperspace jumps, although they could be modified with parts from aftermarket suppliers. The Headhunter was still a powerful weaponized platform, equipped with blaster cannons, ion cannons, concussion missile launchers, and deflector shields, providing a credible combat asset in space combat. The Z-95 was particularly well-suited to the Reaper Squadron, and post-rise of the Empire, it saw use by the Rebel Alliance and even pirate factions. The Z-95 was a powerful fighter that influenced subsequent designs, including the ARC-170 Starfighter. It featured a hyperdrive, astromech socket, and a X-shape for engine cooling. The ARC-170 was powerful during the Clone Wars, playing a significant role in major conflicts like the Battle of Sulust and the Battle of Malastari. However, its large size and massive guns made it difficult for stealth operations. Despite its limitations, the ARC-170 played a significant role in the Clone Wars, but was phased out as the Empire grew. The lessons from the Z-95 and ARC-170 helped create the T-65 X-Wing, the symbol of the Rebel Alliance. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.